I really want to thank you for just being on this journey, uh, just in a place where um, we've been reconciling all things back to the Father. And I really also want to thank you for taking time out to listen and to watch, you know, what the Lord is basically doing uh, in this hour as well. So it is to that that I just wanted to bring this word onto each and every one of us, according to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. It says here, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. We understand the dimension of our Lord and our Savior Jesus and how he has come to basically set us free from everything that basically held us bound in times past to reconcile us back to God. This is what he did with the Jews. And through what he did in, in, in with the Jews, we thank God that we have been grafted in. Hence why we are born again. And for that reason is why I want to speak uh, to a dimension of people. Because, you know, we thank God for the journey where the Lord has been removing us from every form of slavery that was placed on us. Not by our own fault for some people by our fault with some people and by the mercy of god he has come to what to bring us out of all that dimension that we might walk in what in liberty to god be the glory so for that in itself is why i want to introduce a man in the bible to help you to understand what he did and why it was his fault <laughs> and that will basically resonate with majority of you so it's not basically saying it's your fault alone no not at all for some of you it was done to you without your knowledge and this is why we've been on this channel trying to reconcile those places back to the father so there's a man called jacob yeah jacob because it was basically prophesied of him by God unto Rebecca, saying, hey, you have two children, and the older shall serve the youngest. Yeah, that is the prophetic word. But as we see it, Jacob decided to have his own way. What did he do? He stole his brother's birthright. And not only basically stealing that birthright, even because Esau himself did not understand the importance of that birthright, and because of food, he eventually gave that birthright away. And Rebecca did not help matters at the same time, because what did she do? She decided to aid Jacob on by saying, hey, let us basically take the blessing. You go and, uh, you know, you need to get your father's blessing, you know, go and get me an ewe or a lamb and we'll cook it, you know, your father's favorite and you can go and receive the blessing. Can you see how the mother helped <laughs> to basically inherit that in itself, which was absolutely wrong? Because the way they went about it was not the way the Lord wanted to go about it. That is why you begin to understand that man has a will, God has a will. That's why Jesus surrendered his will to God. Let not my will be done. And this is what majority of us have done because we did not understand the perfect will of God and because our parents did not understand the perfect will of God. That is why they introduce all manner of things that we can get around it in order to come to the Father, which is not the will of God, basically. So you can see by what happened, Jacob had to run away from his family. Can you see that dimension? This is the reason why majority of you had to be separated from families. Can you see that too? So you can begin to understand why the Lord has been calling majority of you out, out of the sanctuary, out of the business, out of the job, out of the country, out of wherever it is that you're in, so that you can come into the fullness of what he has for you. Now you can see the life of Jacob. He was basically in his father's house. He was enjoying himself. He had everything until he began to take the wrong steps. And then the wrong steps eventually landed him in what? In slavery with Laban, Rebekah's brother. So you can begin to understand that dimension in itself. Yeah. So you can see that by what he did, you know, he ended up in slavery. So you can see this in the book of Genesis, and it was seen in chapter 31, how he had been serving. Now look at the journey that he put himself through. He found a girl right in Laban's house, not in the will of God. Can you see that? So because of a woman, he went to work seven years. He ended up in slavery. 
Can you see why majority of you, the Lord is basically saying, hey, you know, let me show you who your partner is. Because by basically going with your own decision of who you want to be with, you can end up in what? In slavery. So you can begin to understand it, which goes along with the word in the book of Jake, uh, in the book of what? Uh, Joshua. Can you see? He made a covenant with the Gibeonites. And upon making the covenant with the Gibeonites, he started fighting battles that he shouldn't have. So now you can see some of you are in relationships and now you're engaged in battles that you shouldn't even be engaged in right from the very beginning. Now the mercy of God is upon you in this hour. So you can continue to see how in that dimension, because he did not inquire how the family should be, he went and married the young, he basically wanted the younger one. And then they brought him Lear. And they said, no, this is not how we do it here. What happens? You have to, the older one has to get married first before the younger one does get married. So you can begin to see. Now he has to work another what? Another seven years, 14 years for just one woman. Can you see that in itself? So look at the slavery that was happening in itself, in that family, which Jacob got himself entangled with, which was not the will of God right from the very beginning. So you can begin to see the testimony that Jacob began to speak in what? In the house of Laban when he eventually left. He said, hey, for 14 years <laughs> I served. Can you see that? He said, for, for 20 years now I had been in your house. Your sheep and your goats have not miscarried, nor have I eaten rams of your flocks. So you can begin to understand how he began to speak that, hey, you know, for 14 years I worked for your daughters and for six years I worked in your field. So you can see the testimony of how he went about doing things, which was not what? Which was not the will of God, how he went about it right from the very beginning. But we give God the glory because you know why? When the time had finally come, do you see that? The Lord decided to show mercy to Jacob once again. And now look at the testimony that was given unto Jacob. Let's read it. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 31, it says, Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken everything our father owned and has gained all his wealth from what belonged to our father. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude toward him was not what it had been. So now, for what it is that you have been in, whether you've been in that place of work, whether you have been with the family, whether you have been in that business, whether you have been in that sanctuary, the Lord is helping you to understand in this hour that he says, hear what they are saying. Because everything that I have blessed you with in this hour, it belongs to either the boss. So you can see how the testimony of Laban's sons began to play out. Now look at what the boss is saying to you. Because of him, that is why you're where you are today. Look at what the pastor, apostle, the bishop, all of that, they're saying to you that if it had not been for them, your spiritual life would have not been the way it is at this point in time. See how people are now taking credit for what God is doing in your life. Why? Because it was not where you ought to be right from the very beginning. Maybe for some of you, it was where the Lord actually led you to be. Now, look at it because of the motives of the people. Can you see? Because the Bible says in the book of James, it says you have not, you have not because you do not ask. It says, and the reason why is because you're asking with the wrong motives. So when you ask, you don't receive. So you end up in quarrelings. And why do you end up with quarrelings? Because with while you are asking, you are asking with the wrong motives. So you can begin to understand what they began to speak about Jacob. Now look at what they are saying concerning you. You know, look at look at this person. You know, they came to our they came to our sanctuary. They came to my business. Now look at how they are thriving. If it had not been for me, you would not be where you are today. Have you ever heard those kind of statements before your boss helping you to understand you've been doing the work diligently you've been thriving in what you're doing you've been doing you know they've been basically inspecting your work they've been so impressed with what it is that you're doing and now the supervisor the the boss is now taking credit for what god has been doing himself in your life now you can see it says laban's sons were saying so look at what they are saying concerning you, that you have taken everything the father owned and has gained all this wealth from what belonged to our father. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude towards him was not what it had been. 
So look at the attitude of the boss. Look at the attitude of what? Look at the attitude of the supervisor. Look at the attitude of the CEO. Look at the attitude of the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the bishop, the teacher, the evangelist. Look at the attitude towards you because they're saying, if it had not been for you, you would not be where they're at. You can see that even though it was the Lord blessing. So you can begin to understand that the blessing was already on Jacob. So everywhere Jacob was going, he was thriving because it was the word of God upon his life. The older shall serve the younger. That was the beginning of the promise that is now manifesting in what he was doing. We know that Jacob didn't do everything right. Sometimes he was doing things, you know, that was not in the will of God, you know, trying to, you know, do things in a conniving way, even to get blessed in itself. But yet God was still showing mercy all the way. So you can begin to see. Now, for that reason is why the Lord has been calling you out. Because even sometimes in marriages, yes, in marriages, you know, the wife can say, if it had not been for me, the husband will not be where he is. The husband is saying, if it had not been for me, the wife will not be where she is. Not knowing that it is actually the word of God that is playing out in the life of that person. So the blessing that that person is experiencing is not from you. It is from God. It's only using you as what? As a <laughs> as a conduit for the blessing. So you can begin to understand because he says, where does my help come from? It comes from him, the maker of the heaven. So it's a, an opportunity for the boss, for God, you know, for the boss to be used by God to bless that person. It's a, it's a blessing in itself for God to use the wife to bless the husband. It's a blessing for the husband, for God to use the husband to bless the wife. Can you see? But then, it says that what? The attitude now changed. So the Lord is helping you to understand that the attitude towards you at your place of work, where you worship, you know, those around you, even in families, their attitude towards you have changed. Can you see? This happened with Joseph, didn't it? Yeah. So it happened with Joseph. So you can see with Joseph, oh, I have a dream. The attitude of the brothers, they change. Let us kill him. You know, because, you know, how can we bow to this young man? <laughs> Do you see that in itself? So hence the reason why the Lord has been calling you out. Because the attitude though with those around you they've changed towards you the love they had for you at first is not the same as it is right this minute the love the brothers the love the, the father the love the mother the love the boss the supervisor the love that they have even the people that are basically the lord has called you to the love they have for you is not the same as it was before now the Lord now gave Jacob a command. He says, the Lord said to Jacob, go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives and I will be with you. So you can see that the reason why the Lord is moving you on from where you are is because the attitude of the people have changed. They are now taking credit for what God is doing in your life. So you can begin to see that in that dimension, Jacob began to pack all his belongings and he says, I'm now heading out from where I am. I'm going to, you know, where the Lord is basically instructing me to go to. But look at what eventually happened. As Jacob began to leave, the Bible says that on the third day, Laban was told that Jacob had fled. And what happened? It says that what? Laban pursued Jacob. <laughs> so now you can begin to understand as he began to pursue the God, then the Lord came to Laban. The Aramean. In a dream at night, I said to him, be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. So you can see that this is the warning the Lord is giving to those that are speaking against you. He says, be careful of how you treat this person. Be careful what you say about that person. Be careful. Can you see what he's saying to your boss, to your family, those who are maltreating you, to those who are what? Who are speaking all manner of things against you. God has given them the warning to be careful not to say anything to you, good or bad. Why? Because he understands that when they begin to speak, they are speaking the intent of their heart, trying to take credit for what, what God is doing for you so that they themselves might not what receive the, because the Bible says, what was the promise that was on Abraham? Anyone who blesses you will be blessed. Anyone who curses you will be cursed. So it was a warning for who? For Laban, that, hey, there is a covenant on this person. And the Lord is helping you to understand that there is a covenant on you because of how they treat you. 
That is the reason why some people are reaping the rewards of that covenant in itself. Do you see that? So you can begin to understand that Jacob now living because Jacob had served 20 years in the house of what? In the house of Laban. So you can begin to see because in verse 38 of Genesis 31, it says, I have been with you now for 20 years. So you can begin to understand the journey that what? That Jacob had been in what? In the house of of Laban, because in the very verse of verse 40, it says, this was my situation when I was at your house. This, the heat consumed me in the daytime, the cold at night, the sleep fled from my eyes. It was like this for the 20 years I was in your household. I worked for you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flocks. And you changed my wages 10 times. Do you see that? And it says, if the God of my father, the God of Abraham, the, and, the, and, the, and the fear of Isaac had not been, <laughs> so it's not the fear of Isaac. We don't have the fear of people in Jesus' name. No, not at all. But he was saying, if this had not happened, if it had not been for God, you would have sent me away empty-handed. But God has seen my hardship and the toil of my hands. And last night he rebuked you. Do you see? That dimension, because of the heart of the people. That's the reason why the Lord is basically separating you. Because for some of you, you have gone into slavery without even you knowing. So this is the dimension that every form of slavery that you have been in, whether with the business, whether with people, because some of you, you can even be in slavery with families. That is why majority of you are not willing to let families go. You are so holding on to them you you don't want to you know and some some family members at the same time you know some of them they probably gone in a diabolical manner and they are basically working all manners of witchcraft against you they're trying to hold you down they're saying without you because the bible tells us that a man's enemy is a member of his household so you can begin to see it somebody has seen your star they've seen how great you are and they said at my word this person will not succeed so what did they do they initiated you into a covenant that was not the will of god and now they are basically Basically controlling all manner of things concerning your life. They control how much money you make. They control how far you go. They control who basically helps you. They control how you need to be helped. They control everything. Can you see that? So now you've been struggling, trying to make forth. You've been struggling, trying to go forward. You've been struggling for breakthrough. You've been struggling in every dimension and your life has been a consistent patterns of struggles and you did not understand that there was a root to it. Whether it was your family, or it was a generational thing and you now begin to understand father when am i going to get out of this situation and he has been helping you to understand it's because you went into laban's house and for that reason i'm bringing you out of laban's house so this is where majority of you are going to begin to understand that this is the hour because remember this is when pharaoh said i refuse i'm not letting the people go but by the power and the hand and the mighty hand of the living god pharaoh eventually released the children of Israel and they left Egypt and they did not leave empty handed. Just in the same way Jacob did not leave empty handed is the same way the children of Israel did not leave empty handed when they were leaving Egypt. And for that reason is why you have to understand now is the time that every form of slavery, the root of slavery in your life, the person who has refused to let you go and said that they have become God over your life. This is the hour that I am releasing you from every form of slavery, whether immigration, whether family, whether friends, relationships, whatever form of slavery that you are aware of or you are not aware of. This is where the power of my word, the power of my hand has come that I may set you free once and for all, that you may go forth as it was declared in the book of Genesis and 31. Then the Lord said to put your name there go to the land of your fathers and to your relatives and I will be with you so move from where you are to where you need to be and I will be with you move from that sanctuary to where I need you to go and I will be with you move from that business to where I need you to be and I will be with you leave that job and come with me and I will be with you Peter leave your boat leave it all and follow me and I will be with you you can begin to understand Understand the dimensions of what the end of slavery for who for Jacob so I want to announce to you today 
Today marks the end of your slavery. Today marks the end of your slavery, whether to your family, whether to the household, whether to that business, whether to that ministry, whether to that relationship, whatever has kept you in that slavery and has refused to let you go. This is the hour the Lord is saying, go back. So this choice is now yours to go forward into what God, because Jacob was supposed to go forward, but he went back. Do you see? <laughs> Can I share that again? Jacob was supposed to be moving forward, but he went back. Yeah. He was supposed to be moving forward, but because he stole the blessing, he went back. Can you see that? Now he has to be moved forward again. So this is the dimension you begin to experience. So you can see the setback that happened only because he decided to steal his brother's blessing and the brother wanted him dead. He went not in the will of the father. So for majority of you, this is your story. For majority of you, maybe the Lord told you, hey, go and do that because why? Where you were, he was protecting you for a time. There were things you needed to learn. There were circumstances that you needed to, you know, to mature in. And for that reason, it's now time to move forward into what the Lord intends for you to do. This is where the slavery of your life ends. He's bringing it to an end and it begins today. So the person who placed you in, those who plotted you, your downfall, and who basically try to rope you in. This is the dimension where gradually, immediately, suddenly, he's bringing you out of it. He says, Jacob heard what they were saying. And then he says, the reason why the Lord is basically bringing you out is because you have to understand why you were there, God blessed you. But you have to understand that the fullness of that blessing cannot manifest because of the motives of those that are around you. Yes, it can't. It can't manifest because you know why. Let me give you an example. Cain and Abel. One, he accepted. One, he rejected. He ended up killing the one that was accepted. Abel, come with me to the field. What are we going to do? Boom, he died. Can you see that dimension? Joseph, go and feed your brothers. You know, go and check up on what they're doing. Yes, father. He went and he never came back home. Do you see the patterns of that in itself? Can you see that? Hey, look at Absalom. You know, the brother misbehaved rather than showing mercy. Can you see? Hey, brother. Yeah, I'm having a banquet. Come on, let's go. Let's go and have some, you know, ding ding. We're going to have some food. We're going to enjoy ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he went to the party and he never came home. So you can be, <laughs> you can begin to see the reason why he cannot bless you in the midst, fully in the midst of those that are around you, because Laban's sons were saying. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you can understand it because they were saying, and in verse two is because Laban's attitude, Cain's attitude changed. Can you see Joseph's brothers, their attitude changed. Can you see that the Absalom's attitude changed? So you can continue to see that dimension. Even Judas Iscariot's. <laughs> so you can begin to understand the dimension of the fulfillment of the purpose of the father why he said i cannot fully bless you where you are so i need to move you on so that you can receive the fullness of what i have for you because the motives of the people around you it's not right go back to the land of your fathers because it was the promise that was made to Abraham. Remember Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 12? It says, leave your country and your household to a land I will show you. And yes, he went to that land. He got there eventually. And that's, you know, and Isaac came forth and Isaac tried to go to Egypt. It was there. The Lord says, remain in this land and I will bless you. And it was there. God basically blessed him and multiplied. He stayed. Can you see that dimension? So Isaac remained on that land. Jacob 
Jacob, you know, Abraham got to the land, Isaac remained in the land, and Jacob ran away from that land. Now God said, now return to that land. Because why? The promise was on Abraham. The manifestation was on Isaac. The revelation was in Jacob. So you can begin to see why he had to, he had to go back to that land so that the fulfillment of it can be made manifest. Because Jacob had a problem of always leaving the land. <laughs> Can you see that in itself? <laughs> because he left that land again and went to Egypt. And now look at what happened for 430 years. And the Lord had to now eventually bring them out of that Egypt and take them back to the land. So you can see why majority of you, because you went into slavery, not for some of you, it's not because of a fault of your own. Some people ended up in slavery because other people were jealous of you. They say, ah, this one, there is light on him. We can't just let him be. Otherwise, he will shine. He will outshine all of us. Let us do something quickly to make sure. That's what Herod wanted to do with Jesus. Go and find out and come back and tell me. <laughs> do you see that in itself? So you can begin to understand the motives of the people. With Even with Herod, go and find out so that I too may come. But his intentions was to kill Jesus. Joseph, take him away from here. <laughs> go and hide in Egypt for a while. So you can begin to understand. For some of you, yeah. So where you were with Laban was actually God hiding you. Can you see? For a while. But then the motives, because they've begun to take credits. Look at that person. See that ministry? <laughs> I was the one who led him into it. <laughs> if it's not because of me, he would not have been where he is today. Ah, look at that person. Yeah. You know, when they first started ministry, they didn't have anything. I was the one taking care of them. Yeah. I was the one giving them money. I was the one giving them all of those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they made it because of me. Look at the motive of that in itself. Not giving glory to God. For God using them to be able to manifest a blessing. But they were taking credits. And Jacob noticed Laban's attitude. Even your family members. I used to help that thing. I used to help him. I used to buy him provisions. I used to buy, I used to give him money. When he needed things, he would come to me. Yeah, yeah. He would come to me. So in the place where he's coming to me, and you see, God told you, stop asking them for anything. And now you stop. And now, wow, wow, wow. You know, they began to take credit for what God is doing and the Lord says it's time to leave the land of slavery so you can begin to understand it in in verse 38 you see what it was speaking it says that what for 20 years I was in your household I worked for you look at the slavery slavery for 14 years because of one woman then eventually working six years and the wages kept being changed it was not dealing with them in a just manner but God seen my hardship. God has seen your hardship in that business. God has seen your hardship in that sanctuary. God has seen your hardship in that community. God has seen your hardship where you are at this moment in time, even in the midst of your family. God has seen your hardship. And now it is time for you to leave the land of slavery to the land of freedom. Yeah, I know we're already in Christ. Yes, because Christ is freedom. Can you see that in itself? Christ is freedom. That's because the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of Christ, wherever he is, there is freedom and the spirit is in you and you are already free. But where you are, can you see that? Is a limitation to the freedom that you're yet to experience. And that's the reason why he said in verse three, he said, then the Lord said to put your name, go back. So this is where majority of you, you're going to where the land he has promised you. Leave your father's house to a land I will show you. You're moving. Leave that business to the place I will show you. Leave that ministry to the place I will show you. Can you see that dimension? And this is leave that relationship for me to lead you into what I have for you. Because the land where you are is a land of slavery. And why? Because the people have begun to say all manner of things, taking credit for what I did, I'm doing, and still yet to do in your life. And because that is grieving the Lord, he says, my glory, I will not share with any other. And because of that glory is why he's taking you, for you to understand that no, for what I'm about to do in your life, 
Nobody's going to take the credit for this. Not at all. Not in your life. No, no, not while I am God in your life. No, no one will take the credit for this because for too long, people have been taking credit for everything I have been doing in you. They have been taking credit that it is them. 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 They've not even given me the glory for what I did through them for you. Can you see that? But the motives of their heart, it has changed. Their attitude towards you it has changed and for that reason is why i am moving you on do you see that your slavery has come to an end so this is where he's unyoking you from every form of slavery according to galatians chapter 5 through the finished work of, of the cross so stand firm and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke. So every yoke of slavery, this is the freedom that you're going to begin to experience. I'm unyoking you from every slavery, whether generationally, whether relationally, or whether territorially. So whatever yoke that has been placed on you, either through ignorance or what you did by yourself, by my mercy, I am coming and I have come to basically remove that yoke from you. I'm going to begin to expose all the people who basically place you inside this yoke. I'm going to begin to expose them. I'm going to begin to reveal them to you because the Bible declares, it says that what? It says in his word. It says in his word. It says that my light will shine on everything that is dark. That is what it says in the book of Ephesians and chapter 5. Everything that is dark in you all around you, I am shining my light on you. Why? Because you will begin to know the truth and the truth will begin to set you free. And when I begin to reveal this truth to you, I'm revealing every labor in your house, that every labor around you, in your life, I am revealing it. And the reason why I'm revealing it is so that you can eventually proceed into what I have called you to do. That is why the Bible declares, according to Ephesians, Ephesians 5 11 have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness but rather expose them it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret look at what the disobedient are doing they are trying to yoke you some of you they have yoked into slavery and for that reason everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes light that is why my light I rise shine for your light and the light that has come in this hour is to expose the fruit deeds is to expose the disobedient what they are basically doing in secret that is why i'm exposing it by my light because it is time to set you free amen the hour has come it is time to leave the house of laban the hour has come it is time to leave every laban in your life any person who has set themselves up as laban can you see laban did not even care that that was his sister's son <laughs> laban did not care that that was his sister's son do you see he says when your brother <laughs> now look at what he says in genesis 27 he says now then my son do what i say flee at once to my brother laban in haran stay with him for a while until your brother's fury subsides laban did not care that that was the sister's son Placed him in slavery. <laughs> you see that? Said so being slay enslaved and cheating him again and again. You would have thought, this is my brother's son. I will treat him nice. I will look after him. Yeah, he will relax. He will enjoy himself. I will make sure everything is taken care of. I will make sure. But because he saw the blessing, he knew he was blessed because of Jacob. He now began to treat him in an unjust manner. Can you see that? So he now began to leave. So this is my own this is my own counsel to you at the same time too. And my counsel is this because you have to understand and Jacob fled from Laban. Please. You know, he didn't tell Laban that he was leaving. He didn't tell Laban anything. He just packed his thing and ran away. <laughs> ran away. So please don't don't do that. No, not at all. Don't 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 run away, you know, just like that. Make sure you let your leader know. If you're leaving the ministry, let your leader know. If you're leaving the business, your workplace, let your leader know. If you're leaving your home, let them know. Can you see? Don't just run away from them. No, let them know. Because you know why? The same way you honored them to let them know the Lord was 
will honor you. Do you see that? Because some people, when they basically leave a place, they just leave and they don't bother. They cut the person off. They cut, 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 cut. No, no, no. You don't do that. Not at all. Do you see that? So when you're leaving the sanctuary, let the pastor know. When you're leaving the business, let the CEO know. When you're leaving <laughs> the job, let your boss or your supervisor know. Let them know that you're leaving. Do you see that? And then when, you know, the Lord will honor you at the same time too. Don't just leave and just cut people off. That is the reason. If if J if Jacob had basically told Laban, I'm leaving, you know, there would have been no need to pursue him. <laughs> but he didn't. He fled. <laughs> you see that, that? He's always fleeing, isn't it? He fled from his brother. He fled from Laban. <laughs> to God be the glory. So don't, don't, no, no, do it the right way in Jesus' name. But this is where the Lord is unyoking you from every form of slavery because it is time to set you free. You have been around this mountain long enough. You can see with Jacob, he had been around the mountain. He had been around. He had been around. He had been around the mountain. You have been around Laban long enough. You have been around Laban long enough. You have been around Laban. Whatever represents Laban, Laban in your life. You have been around that Laban long enough. It is now time to set you free from the house of Laban. It is now time to set you free from every yoke of slavery because it is time for you to go into what I have called you to walk into. You can see that dimension. Yes. It is time for you to head into what I have called you into. It is now time for you to go to the land that I promised that I would give unto you. Yeah, the land of Canaan that I promised to Abraham. Now you're entering into that nation. Now you're entering into what I've called you to enter into. So now you begin to see the fulfillment where nobody can take credit for what I am doing in your life. And where you're going, you're going to be loved. You're going to be appreciated. People are going to want to be around you to hear what I have placed in you. People are want to, going to buy from you, from the business that I've established in you. People are going to want to come into the kingdom that you are in creation because your set time has come. I love you. Stay blessed because you're the blessedness of the Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.